Okay, good morning. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked, obviously, getting that bike uh, working. So on uh, DT175 from 78, uh, we've got a few more tasks to do. Um, what I actually found out was that um, I tried to get this bike uh, idling properly, but it's quite erratic. So the revs went up to about 3,000, and they, they would come down very, very slowly with the throttle. It wasn't an instant response. So generally that means there's a, I'm getting air in the system someplace. And then also, um, I could smell the oil uh, from the back. It wasn't normal two-stroke. It felt more like, you know, like the transmission oil. And then uh, recollection, when I put the actual piston in, I could actually see transmission oil on the crankshaft, which not only in the first four-stroke, that's fine, but the two-stroke, there shouldn't be any oil in there other than what comes through the two-stroke mixture. So that basically means you get two seals in the crankshaft each side, um, probably leaking. Now, I haven't done a leak down test, which is where you pressurize the system by blocking off the export, the output port, um, and all the other ports, putting the piston at the bottom dead center, and then forcing in about six, seven pounds per square inch, and then see if it stays or leaks because it's going to leak. So, I ended up just ordering up um, uh, two new seals for the crankcase. I had also two bearings for the crank, uh, for the crankshaft when it was turning over ticking. I could hear sort of a rumbling, I think the bearings probably are on the way out, but I have to split the crankcase for that, so I'm not going to be doing that in a hurry at the moment. So um, definitely I can replace the seals in situ, so um, that's what I'm going to do, wait on that. Um, meantime, I'll show you where we are now. Uh, meanwhile, I actually did put on the back tyre, so the back tyre never arrived, and I cleaned up the hub, and uh, you can see it's actually it's not too shabby now. Um, that's cleaned up, uh, the exhaust system's back on. And uh, that turned out quite good. A little bit of staining up here, dripping, but I uh, can't complain about that. Um, so that's happy. Of course, we've now got this crappy green, and you can see the original red flaking through. So yesterday, what I tried was um, I bought all the paint stuff. Oh yeah, sorry, I did actually put exhaust muffler packing in the back from FMF. Um, uh, I did take side panels off, and I've started to sort of sand these down, and it takes a lot of work. Um, so. Interestingly, I was trying to see if we could find paint stripper for plastic, but normally a lot of the paint stripper will actually just eat into the plastic. Now, it turns out, I believe, that this stuff here is not ABS, this flexible, really simple plastic is probably polypropylene. Um, now, with polypropylene and polyethylene plastics, paint stripper could be actually used so these are actually cheap to buy even on the internet if I did get a replacement but what I thought I would do is um, I'm going to try paint stripper um, this paint stripper kiwi strip on this and see if it works because I'm sanding this took me all afternoon to get all the crap off to, down to this level um, and currently I've just got it done with like a this is done with the 80 uh, grit. I'll actually smooth it off a little bit and then you can roughen it up. But with the paints, it's important, but the plastic, seemingly on the internet, when I was reading about it, which is why it was all flaking like this, is that um, you need to act flexing agents to these plastics, why they don't adhere too well. So there's an adhesion promoter you can put down with a flexing agent as a primer. And then on top of that, um, you can actually put down your either uh, your base coats um, and then the, the clear coats. And the other thing to do on the paints here is when you spray it with a clear gloss is to make sure you have um, one that's oil gas resistant. So that's basically a 2K clear coat. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try cleaning that with the, strip that with the cleaner. I might try this on the inside because I'm not too sure. It, one guy on the internet said he tried to use paint stripper on the side panels. Um, of a DT175 from 1979, and he said the side part, he, he ruined them. So it could be that, uh, I'm gonna just try a little piece in the back of the paint stripper in here, and see if it just eats away at it. It's not too bad in the back panel. But it, it does seem to be the same material to me as, as, as them. But we'll soon find out. So there you go, that's a job, so let's see what happens. Well here's a test sample in the back of this. Would you believe that? It just came off like nobody's business, and I don't see it 
eating into the plastic, pulling off the paint. Oh my god, this took me about three hours yesterday to do this. So what I'm going to do is uh, I sprayed it on the mud guard here. I'm going to wait. I don't think I have to wait long. And then basically I'm just going to wash that off under the tap, around the corner. If that's the case, I'll just spray these two and that off. And then uh, we should be golden. I can just start working on the tank. Unbelievable. That's freaking great to know. So effectively it's true. So it's, uh, yeah, that is not eating in. It's only taking that paint off. So this here, this can't be ABS, this is poly, polypropylene, polyethylene. Yabba dabba do. <laughs> That's going to be great. Well, here's the, uh, after the first treatment of the paint stripper. Not too shabby at all, huh? This is coat number one. It's probably, I sanded a little bit here just to I could get it smooth here, but uh, I ran out of uh, the paint stripper. It was just a spray, so I went and got the uh, aircraft stuff. And um, I also got uh, all the paints. So it turns out um, I bought a whole bunch of stuff. It cost me a bomb. So I've got, uh, I keep couldn't find this anyway, I got grease and wax remover for cleaning stuff up. Uh, this is the uh, just duplicate of uh, plastic adhesion promoter, which is that uh, you put on the Plastics so that uh, when you bend the mud guards, etc., the paint doesn't flake off. Um, when I strip the tank, this is actually self etching primer for bare metal, so I'll actually put that on the bare metal for priming that. And then um, I just got a general purpose lacquer here for the plastic parts, but uh, I couldn't find the 2K in the shop. I'm going to put 2K uh, clear lacquer top coat on top of the tank so that. Uh, uh, when I get any gasoline spills on it, it's not going to start ripping off and all that time we've done. And then for the actual colour I'm going to paint the, the bike, it's going to be this blue. So, why did I pick this blue? It's not, I don't have to get exact Yamaha colours, but uh, on the Yamaha Enduro forums I came across a guy who'd actually painted it with this. And it actually came up pretty cool looking. And uh, it's as close to Balboa blue, the original as you'll get in duplicate colours. But the other thing is uh, used, it's this uh, injury enamel with ceramic, so it withstands both oil and fluids. So if you do spill stuff on it, it should be too bad. Um, saying that, if I don't get the proper clear coat on it, then I, I could screw the clear coat up, but at least uh, I could, that could be taken off and saved with this. So, got that. And then I got the aircraft, uh, just the aircraft paint stripper and a couple of scouring pads. So that's where we are at the moment. I actually left on this stuff to see if it would eat into the plastic. Um, the previous paint stripper for metal and it hasn't so these are definitely um, these are definitely uh, polypropylene polyethylene so one of the guys had said as I said earlier had got these panels off a of 79 and he put paint stripper on it and it killed it so I didn't use the air, actual aircraft stripper before I'd used a different one I'd used that uh, quick clean or something it was called so I'm just going to put a little bit of that on the inside of this and see if it does damage it on these two parts. I know it won't do anything here, but um, actually no, this is this is the same stuff. Yeah, yeah, this is just the same stuff. Yeah, this is fine. So uh, it's going to be good. So let's get all this going and see. I've never painted this, but I've never painted a tank before. So we'll see if we can get it from this shape to what I actually wanted. I actually have the decals are coming as well so I have the Yamada decals with the white on this too with the enduro so it should actually start to look pretty good okay let's uh, continue on and get rid of this paint I've really put uh, a couple more coats on that varnish on it we'll see how it turns out okay so I've got the uh, aircraft stripper on this uh, the panels here just put them on and uh, one of the guys on the internet just said you have to do thin coats at a time. And I also done the tank, started on the tank. So we'll see, 3 o'clock, time for a beer. And uh, happy with that. Alternatively, there's not time for a beer, I can actually start taking the seals out. Uh, especially that. Actually, I could take the seal out on the other side here, the magneto. Actually, let me do that, that'll be actually quite fun. Okay, well, that came off pretty easy. Um, 
I've heard that there could be horror stories getting this off. So see the next part, this has never been off before. So I'm going to actually take off the uh, seal at this side. And um, I'd actually just torqued up this uh, last night to 40 pounds. Um, and actually managed to torque it holding it with a, just a Harbour Freight uh, belt strap here. Um, and the reason it came off before is when I tried to start the bike uh, before it would brrrr, it actually unfurled it easy enough. So I do have actually a torque right, a torque, an electric torque hammer um, impact drill in there. But uh, I think I'll be able to just take it off with this. So let me take this off. Uh, it takes some amount of pressure. Uh, there were some horror stories on the internet where people had been putting in pullers on either side of these and then just trying to pull this thing off. Unfortunately, it causes too much stress. You know, either end up completely damaging the magneto itself um, or you break here the uh, Woodruff key that's actually on the shaft in here. So what you want to do is you want to buy one of these. Uh, it's a hub puller, only costs like 12 bucks, 15 bucks maybe, I don't know what it is. Uh, but anyway, for this particular magneto on the 175, um, it's a metric um, M27 by one, and it's a left-hand thread. So effectively, we, uh, we uh, screw that in there. And I'll put the uh, I'll put the uh, strap wrench around it and tighten this up. And um, what's the strap wrench is, by the way? This is just from Harbour Freight, it's a cheap one. But uh, in order to work, you need to sort of jam it underneath, like the pedal, or I had it jammed underneath there to get the like I had it like that to get off the the lock nut. Um, but anyway, let me let's uh, tighten this up, and then basically we just uh, hold it with a spanner. It's a 22 millimeters, and then I start turning that, it'll pop off, hopefully. I heard it does go bang and it could be frightening as shit. Um, the real key, I think, is to also make sure you tighten this in fully into the threads. Um, I've heard horror stories of people also stripping the threads, so if you keep my fingers crossed, this is actually going to come off. Um, but we'll see what happens. Well, I must have had this off at some time because this was, um, uh, <laughs> let's just, Keep off like, yeah, let's keep off no problem at all. Okay, let me get the whole thing off. Well, that came off <laughs> super easy. Ah, uh, here's the two coils. It's like a primary coil and a secondary coil. I wonder if this is a new one. Anyway, I'm going to take off the stator plate here. If you actually notice, when you put this back on its key, there's a square mark. There's a mark. Um, on the stator plate and there's a mark on the bracket that's holding it behind it and you have to line them up when you put it back in for the timing and uh, well, we should be sweet at that point so I'm um, going to unscrew that take this off oh that's annoying because I just yeah I, and then um, I'll take this stator off and I'll just actually hang it I'll, I'll fasten it up here and then I should be able to get to the crank seal and uh, there we have the um, well, the stator plate off, just a screw at top and bottom. You can see the markers talking about up here. So you just actually you don't even have to tie it up, just leave it on here. And there's a crankcase seal here. Now, oh, look at that. Piece of plastic in there, what's that off of? That's interesting. black piece of... Oh, it's cable plastic. <laughs> it's a cable plastic. Anyway, um, let me get my phone on that. Let's have a look. Uh, with a flashlight. <sighs> and uh, I'm going for time for the paint. Oh, it's only been on 20 minutes. So, um, yeah. There's a crankcase. So, um, On this side, this is separated from the engine, so there's no, there should be no oil coming out of this side. You can see it's dry in here. Um, but uh, I'm pretty sure if I did a test, that'd be all. So to get this, oh, there's a Woodruff key. Do you see the Woodruff key there? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out, um, because when I take this off, it's going to be jammed. So you just actually take a slight screwdriver, little Phillips, just tap it towards the edge and down, it should pop out. Let's do that. And um, 
that's the uh the woodruff key out to get it out just take a screwdriver and knock it down a screwdriver blade that will go lengthwise not breadwise and um, smallish one and just tap it at the bottom side gently keep going so you're pressing that in and it's a half moon and it'll slide up the other side and pop out and always and uh, you could reuse that but i never reuse these because you end up as you can see at the top here where i've hammered it it's like a pain in the butt so uh anyway i've got a spare one for that when it goes back in so now we have to get this out so you can use picks for this um and try to pick this seal out but what they recommend you do is you just screw in a little wood screw a little bit in there to get a grip and then pull it out so i'm thinking what i can do is i'll screw one in there and one in there and then pull out both sides see how that goes so i screwed this in um a flashlight here so uh i've screwed this a uh, little screw in just enough to get a bite uh, on that uh seal and then i'll start to uh, weasel it out actually this is worthwhile showing you before i take this out sorry i took my phone um you can see this seal's never been seated properly. Um, if you look at the distance here, it's almost flush with the edge. And if you look at this side over here, there's a gap. So whoever put this seal in last stuck it in an angle and never squared it up. It's no wonder this bloody thing is leaking. <laughs> I don't know, people. And then we have the seal out. And uh, I'm actually looking in here. And if you notice here, when I pulled it out, you can see some oil down here. That is not good. So there's oil in the crankcase. So basically, definitely the right hand seal is gone as well. So my diagnosis was correct. So I'm glad I never burnt that for any length of time because I'm just going to be burning oil off. Uh, so that's, uh, that's not good. Anyways, I like him off a treat. So basically just uh, that package will be here any day now with the new bearing. And the good thing to know about this one is it actually went in. Another thing people will be discussing on the internet is which way which way this goes. So it depends what the guy's saying, but uh, this way the, the open side here was actually facing inwards. Which is what it says in the manual. And the opposite side, it should be facing outwards. So we'll see what happens. Alright, back to the paint job. I forgot how messy this job was. I put down a drop sheet. Um, I'm not actually impressed with this aircraft stuff. I actually got uh, the other quick clean that I used to take off the plastics the other day, but um, anyways, uh, it's down to the bare metal at the top. I just put another coat on it there um, just to take off the remainder of it, but uh, that's looking quite good. But uh, super happy with the way the plastics came up. So uh, this one's actually, you can see it's white down here, but I've sanded it earlier. Um, so you can see how it's actually come up with the, the sanding. But, um, and I'd sanded this yesterday. But for the pieces I didn't sand, I sanded that one. Like here, or inside it, but I didn't sand. Or at the sides of the, the guard. You can see, um, how good that stuff really is. Um, that's called the uh, that fast. Calls it a quick, quick, quick clean, fast stain and varnish remover. Anyway, that takes it right down. Yeah, this white stuff is the is uh, some of the sanding I'd done on there earlier to just to try and see how it was. And then obviously I had, I'd run out of the stuff. You go through a couple of that was a couple of cans just to do these four pieces again and I ran out for the finish the mud guard but uh, that's going to be cool I could try and use that aircraft remover stuff on this one but it did work but it wasn't, in ways, it wasn't nowhere as good as the other stuff I can try it on there because that's the only part that's remaining these are just I took them all off the back too so tomorrow I can actually finish these off, sanding them all down smooth, stick them in a dishwasher, yep, a dishwasher, not heated dry, just a, a rinse cycle, get them all clean, and then the tank, I'll have to finish off the bottom of that, 
uh, the horn just arrived, so the horn I've stuck on the bike, so that's cool. So effectively this is the, uh, they take the seal out, one seal out in preparation. I could probably drain it and take out the other seal for uh, the other side. That was, that was a dead easy job, that. All, that. all of that took like six minutes. Um, so, yeah. It's going to be pretty good. Pretty good. Well, that's it for today, folks. Well, this is a following day from when I started stripping all the paint off the, the, the parts. Um, super happy with the way the tank's come up. The tank's actually in great nick. There's no real dents in it at all. So, uh, because there's no dents in it, I'm just actually finally down it, taking off the final parts of the paint here. And um, I've got a huge amount of money spent, over $100 on paint and strippers and probably $150 and all the other stuff, I think. Maybe $150. But, I guess. Um, in terms of getting the paint off the plastic bumpers and the panels, this was the best. This is actually this actually worked better than the aircraft. It's a clean strip and it comes just it just came off in sheets. Uh, the plastic had been painted on. I'll show you that in a minute. And uh, I actually have um, for the bare minimum here. It's uh, I've got uh, automotive primer duplicolors, the self etching. So I'm going to put that down. And then this is an enamel. This is actually have enamel paint. I put down this as an enamel primer. Um, and then obviously I have uh, acrylic lacquer, which I probably I won't use that, I don't think. Um, I'm going to use a, this is a plastic trim. So this is a plastic adhesion promoter, which I'll put on before I put the primer on. Um, and this is the actual paint. Now, I read on the, God, this paint is an absolute nightmare. Ideally, you should be using with a lacquer paint. You'd be a lacquer uh, base coat, a lacquer... Um, so I like a primer, like a base coat, and like a top coat, or an enamel primer, an enamel base, an enamel top coat, or a 2K base, blah blah blah, all the same. But it turns out people have been getting actually reasonable results. So this is a color which is about Boa Blue, which a guy in the Yamaha and Euro Forum had recommended to use. He didn't say whether he used a lacquer or not, but since I've already got the self etching and the premium grey here, I think I'm going to use that. And I'm going to let it cure for uh, probably a week. And what I might do then is I'll sand that down with like a 600 grit. And I'll actually play, I'll actually maybe more than that, maybe a, maybe a thousand grit. And then I'll, um, I can either put on um, this acrylic here. This is an acrylic lacquer. And um, this is a 1K lacquer, but on enamel, which... I believe should work okay and then you can put the 2k oil gas resistant on top of that that would be my plan but other people have actually had really good results of just actually using this curing it for a couple of days sanding it down with 600 and then spraying it directly with the 2k primer so i'm going to probably try a little bit of that um on the back end of the plastics to make sure they don't work but while i'm doing that i'll show you what i'm currently doing um so these are plastic parts the original parts um they came off I've started to scuff this up actually with sandpaper, but if you look underneath, you know, it's still the same with the bottom there, I was about to prime that. Um, but if I take the mud guard, which I haven't sanded underneath, you can actually see this came up. This is full of paint. So effectively what I'm going to do is just actually clean this in the, the, the uh, dishwasher, get all the chemical crap off it, and then, uh, without heat, obviously. And then uh, I'm going to put down, uh, once that's dry, I'm going to put down the adhesive promoter and then the enamel primer on these and uh, see how that comes up. Looking forward to that. Okay, let's uh, put them in and wash them. <laughs> 